Mobile devices have taken over our lives. When was the last time you left yours at home and felt lost without it? Well, we hope you brought yours with you tonight because Pixel Media is hosting Josh Clark, author of Tapworthy, and a renowned mobile design and user experience specialist. Nice. Are you shooting video? Hey, Dan. Oh, hey, Crystal. Crystal. Happy birthday. Welcome. Oh, thank you. You remembered. It's your birthday. Yeah, thanks, Joe. You've been here all day. My name is Josh Clark and I'm a designer who specializes in mobile design and user experience and also something that I think of as design strategy, which is kind of like product strategy, but how do you design an experience across lots of different platforms. So a big part of that is about designing for touch and how does the touch screen change the way that we have to think about um, the interactions and the interfaces that we create, uh, not only as designers, frankly, but also as consumers. You know, it's something that I think uh, comes as, as real news to a lot of people, and, it, and it's important because it changes the way that you think about the role of, of mobile in your overall digital diet, not only as a company, but as a consumer. Uh, is that there are a huge number of people who are whose only computer is their phone. You know, oh, in India, in Egypt, in Asia, People aren't surprised to find out that it's like, oh, 90% of those populations, you know, use, have their phone as their only computer. It turns out that in the U.S., those numbers are pretty high, too. 31% of people who access the Internet on their phone almost only access the Internet on their phone, uh, which means, which is a lot of people. I mean, that's about 15% of U.S. adults, or 36 million people won't see your website in any other way other than on a small screen. I think that it's just really important to understand that mobile is part of the fabric of our lives. And I think that most of us know that as consumers and for some reason have a hard time bringing that to our work as business owners or as designers. Uh, and part of the reason that we don't do that is because it's hard. And the real challenge that, that I would put out there to any organization right now is to stop thinking so much about apps and websites and the one, the one little, these little containers that we have. Because these containers, as we know, they expire. After a couple of years, they become outmoded, we have to build a new container. The thing that's current, though, is the service that we offer, the content that we offer. And the important thing to start doing is to think about how do we prepare the infrastructure, the, 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 the content store, the, the back-end APIs, to actually support this multi-platform world that we're in so that we can have a single wellspring of content and service of which all of our little applications are individual windows into that so that we can quickly, if we build these backends that can support all these different platforms, then we can respond to each of these individual products much faster. And that's big work. That's something that requires not only technology and organizations like Pixel Media, but also real change inside, you know, organizational change, workflow change, editorial change, to support broadcast to what seems to be an infinite number of channels. <laughs> Job, <laughs> Thanks, Eric. He's locked. He's locked. He's yeah. like, he can't uh, yeah. actually. I, I, uh, no, I, I, I can't. I can't. <laughs> yes, Dan, Dan, it's happy like birthday. He's, he's, yeah. He sleeps birthday this way. Today, you know, it's like he can't actually. No, this is, this is good. That. He's going to have shoulder good. problems. Thank, thank problem. Thanks, guys. I'm going to go home now. Sophisticated wine drinker, are you? Yeah, I am actually. I'm a closet wine uh, uh, aficionado. Fan. I wouldn't call me an aficionado. I'm more of a purchaser. You can always than a work up to that point. It's uh. What? Can we see the branded glass? Yeah. yeah look at that. Well, I didn't want to be the one guy out of 150 with an actual wine glass. <laughs> And then there's just enough people that know the kind of wine that I have that if they saw the wine glass, um, they'd be a train into my office. You know it's true, people.